What's up guys, welcome to my Blood Death Knight tanking guide for Legion patch 7.2.5. Now in this guide I'm going to be going over your spells and abilities, your talents, your artifact traits and relic choices, your stat priority, and then your tanking rotation if you will or priority system, as well as demonstrations of that in both a mythic plus and raid setting. And then just some macros and add-ons that I use that you might find useful. Now for quick and easy browsing I have included timestamps in the description below so you can click on those to skip to the section that you want to see. I first want to go over your spells and abilities and I'll begin with your alternative resources. You do have runes as you can see you got six runes and you spend them on abilities and they recharge over time. Now every rune you spend does generate some runic power which is your other resource and that you spend on other abilities. The first spell I want to go over is called Death Crest. One rune ability it just does a little damage and applies a Plague, this is Blood Plague to the target, so it looks like that. And Blood Plague just heals you, so it does damage and it heals you every time it does do damage. Next up is Merorend, this costs 2 runes and does damage and generates charges of Bone Shield, so it looks like this. And then Bone Shield gives you haste, damage reduction, and it also stacks up to 10 times. Every time you get meleeed, it does consume a charge of Bone Shield. Heart Strike is a 1 rune ability. Pretty simple, it hits the target and one other, so it does cleave off to one target, and it generates a bonus 5 runic power, also applies a slow to the target. So when you use it, you gain the runes, what the rune you use generates some runic power for you, plus 5 for using hard strike. Then we've got Death and Decay, costs 1 rune, it's a 15 second cooldown, and you get a targeting reticle as you can see here, and you apply it wherever you like, and it just does damage to the enemies in the area. Now, while you're standing in Death and Decay, it makes your Heart Strike hit up to 5 extra targets, or 5 targets total, excuse me, so it makes the cleave even more. We also do have Blood Boil. Now, this is a free ability, 2 charges, with a cooldown, and you just use it, and you get, hits everything around you, and applies Blood Plague. Now, Death Strike is how we use our Runic Power mostly, and it costs 45 by default, and basically it does a bunch of damage, as you can see. And then it'll heal you based on how much damage you've taken over the last 5 seconds, or based on your maximum health, whichever is higher. Our artifact ability is called Consumption. It's a 45 second cooldown. You swing it in front of you, so it's a cleave, and everything it hits it does damage to, and it heals you for all of the damage that it does do. So it looks like this, and will heal you for all the damage it does. Defensively, we have a few cooldowns. Vampiric Blood, it's our main one, 1.5 one minute cooldown, and you apply it. To yourself and you, you you gain more health and you gain more healing received for the duration. Next up is Dancing Room Weapon. 3 minute cooldown you summon a weapon and it just copies all of your abilities and it also gives you 40% parry while it's active. So you Dancing Room Weapon and if I say Marrow Range you'll see I get extra burn stacks. If I apply Dots with Blood Boil or Death Caress you'll see the multiples of those and Heart Strike will generate more Runic Power, things like that. Then we've got Icebound Fortitude, another 3 minute cooldown. It's pretty simple, it makes you immune to stuns, and it reduces all damage you take by 30%, so it looks like that. We also do have Anti-Magic Shell, it's a 1 minute cooldown, and it gives you this little shield and absorbs magic damage. Now, all the damage you do absorb does get generated or turned into Runic Power, so it gets translated into that. For movement, we do have Wraith Walk, it's 45 second cooldown. Now, you channel this ability, so you can't attack while using it or it will break, but it makes you move quickly. You can, however, use defensive abilities. So Wraithwalk looks like this. You can use a defensive ability like, say, Vampiric Blood or Icebound Fortitude while you're using that and it won't break. And then for utility, we do have Mind Freeze or Interrupt. It has a bit of a range on it, though, which is pretty cool. Looks like that. We also have Asphyxiate, which is a ranged stun. 45 second cooldown, looks like this. We have an AoE mass grip called Gorfin's Grasp. This is a one and a half minute cooldown, or actually two minute cooldown baseline. One and a half with a specific talent. And basically it mass grips everything to the target that you choose. So whether it's an enemy, an ally, or yourself, it will try to AoE grip everything to it. We also have Death Grip, which is a 15 second cooldown and does the same thing but on single target. So you target an enemy and you try to grip it to you. Now it also does Taunt as a Blood Death Knight, so it serves the same purpose in a way as Dark Command, which is our actual Taunt, 8 second cooldown, but this can also be used to move people or things around the map. 
We also do have Control Undead, which has some unique applications. It's a small cast time, costs one rune, and basically you mind control an undead. So it's really cool, just make it your pet. And then we do have a battle res in Ray's Ally. This is completely free. If you need to res someone in combat, this is what you're going to be using. And finally, we do have a passive in Crimson Scourge, and this just makes your auto attacks have a chance to reset your Death and Decay cooldown and make it free so it costs no runes. Now this does only apply to targets with your disease on them, so of course it's important to have your disease up. Next, I want to go over your talents. Now at level 56, you're going to want Blood Drinker pretty much all the time. It's better than the other two in both damage and healing output. Now at 57, Rapid Decomposition is a good default, but the other two are very good as well. Heart of Ice is great if you need longer Iceman Fortitudes to handle a long mechanic or something like that. And Spectral Deflection, if you're making a lot of use of this, so a lot of big swings from the boss, taking big chunks of your health, this can be really good. Now level 58, Ossuary is going to be your go-to, and it's just better survivability than the other two. They may have some niche uses, but in general, Ossuary will be your best option here. Similarly, at level 60, Red Thirst is pretty much the best. It gives you the most uses of your main cooldown, and it's just very, very powerful versus the other two. 75, it's all kind of utility CC based stuff, so it's up to you. I like Tightening Grasp by default because it reduces the cooldown on Gorfin's Grasp, so you get more mass grip, which is always pretty cool. And it gives you a slow on your Death and Decay. But the other two have the uses as well, so don't be afraid to play with those if you like them. Now at level 90, Generally, you're going to want Foul Bulwark. More health is good for tanks in general, and it does boost your baseline healing for Death Strike. And then Rune Tap is a really good alternative if you need a, an on demand cooldown. It has two charges, and it's a very, very potent 40% damage reduction. So, if you need that cooldown, really strong. Otherwise, Foul Bulwark is going to be a go too. Now, level 100. Purgatory is a good choice, just if you think you're going to die. If you ever do die, it will save your ass, and it's really, really strong for that. Now, Blood Mirror is a good choice if you want to cool them. It's a good cool them for both defensive purposes, as well as a little bit of extra DPS on single target. And then Bone Storm, if you're doing massive AoE and you want to add a lot of extra damage and some healing, it's pretty good. But if the healing is, or the damage, excuse me, that you're taking is very spiky, then this is less effective because it does do it over time once per second kind of thing so it does lose that value there but all these have their uses and are strong in the correct situation moving on i want to talk about your artifacts traits your pathing and relic choices so you start here consumption grab the first trait here and then go down to the right empiric fangs rattling bones bone breaker all consuming rot and then unending thirst your first golden trait now after you grab this I recommend going up to the right here, so Grim Perseverance, and then this Golden Trait, Skeletal Shattering. Now, you can go the other way first if you like, but after this I recommend going down, grabbing Iron Heart, Vein Render, and then your third Golden Trait, Umbilicus Eternus. Again, of course, you can do this first if you prefer, but either way you'll be doing those two next, so one or the other. Again, I recommend going to the right first, then down to the left. After that, after you get both of those, go ahead and grab Mouth of Hell. Then Blood Feast down here. And then Dance of Darkness. And then Meat Shield. And then this one that I can't pronounce. So I'm not going to try it, but grab this one last. Now once you're 35, you have all the traits. You'll go ahead and add 35th point into Hungry and More. And then do Broken Short Quest Lines. Open up your new traits. And an extra point in all the old three point traits. And then start with the new stuff. So grab these four first. And your new golden trait up here. And then go ahead and decide what you want to focus on. For survivability, you're going to be picking up Vampiric Fangs, Meat Shield, and Grim Perseverance. And the last two you don't necessarily have to do in that order. And then you can pick up the armor thing last defensively down here. For damage, if you want to do single target first, you'd be Dance of Darkness. And then for AoE, Bane Render would be your first one. Either way, get those two first. Then grab Marrow Ren damage, and then you could grab Death and Decay damage, and then you could grab Blood Plague damage if you really want to. But I do recommend leaving this one till last no matter what, because you should probably grab the defensive stuff first, even if you want to focus on damage. Now in terms of relics, again, it kind of goes to what you want to focus on. 
for defensive purposes. Technically, Vampiric Fangs is supposed to be the best, but sometimes it's like overkill because if you're using Vampiric Blood, generally you won't be dying during that time. So if you don't want to take that, then other good ones are Meat Shield and Grim Perseverance. Those are the two best defensive traits aside from Vampiric Fangs. So all three of those are really quite strong. For offensive purposes, it's pretty simple. For single target, you want Dance of Darkness over here. And then for AoE, or if you don't want, you just kind of want a generic DPS one, Hard Strike is actually going to be your second best one for single target. And of course, really strong for AoE. Everything else is kind of less effective. But in general, you will want just higher item level for the most part. Now in terms of stat priority, I want to first mention that item level is king. So the higher the item level is, generally the better the gear is. So don't sacrifice item level just for better stats, if you can help it, other than maybe on like rings and necks, which have lots of secondaries. Now, if pieces are close in item level or the same item level, then you can start prioritizing. And it goes something like this. For defensive purposes, you want haste up to about 40 to 50% with your bone shield active. So you see I have 30% now. Apply bone shield with marrow rend, and I have 43%. So that's the kind of haste you want to be looking at. And then versatility comes after that, very strong as well. And then more haste afterward. Crit and Mastery are both kind of weak defensively. And which one's better or worse than the other? It's kind of like picking the last place, but Mastery is slightly better for physical damage reduction, even though Crit gives you parry. And Mastery just makes it so every time you heal yourself with Death Strike, you get a percentage of that healing as a physical absorb shield. And so it's better for physical damage. Crit Strike better for magic damage, essentially. But again, both of those pale in comparison to haste and versatility in general. And in terms of DPS, so optimizing your damage the most for stats, basically, again, item level is the biggest thing because strength is the biggest thing for you. But after that, it's normally something like crit, then verse, and then haste, and then mastery. But these are all pretty close and they will vary. So, I would just generally go for item level if you want to work on damaging the most as a Blood Death Knight. And I want to give you your damage priority system as a Blood Death Knight. And it's going to go something like this. First of all, one concept, never let your runes sit. Never let your runic power sit at max either. So, you always want to be using those as much as you can. So, if your runic power is almost full, go ahead and use Death Strike, even if you don't need to heal or anything like that. Just It's important not to let it cap. Now, after that, you want to make sure that Blood Boil, and you use Blood Boil to apply your diseases, so keep your Blood Plague up at all times. After that, Marrow Rend until you have enough Bone Shield stacks, 5 plus for Ossuary, very important. And then make sure that you don't use it if you have 6 or more stacks already of Bone Shield. Otherwise, you'd be wasting potential Bone Shield stacks, because remember you have Rattling Bones for the extra proc chance of another Bone Shield. Once you have enough Bone Shield, then you're going to be using your runes on Death and Decay on cooldown. If you have Rapid Decomposition, even single target, certainly for AoE. Now, if you don't have Rapid Decomp, you don't use Death and Decay except for the free procs on single target, but you will still use it for AoE. And then, of course, if you took Blood Drinker, which I do suggest, use that on cooldown as well. I like to think about it like an offensive ability. Even though it heals, the healing is a little bit less than Death Strikes. So generally, I just use it for extra damage, extra threat and for a good amount of healing during that as well. Now after that, Heart Strike is what you'll be using your runes on. So you already have your Bone Shield, you have used these two, they're on cooldown. Go ahead and just Heart Strike, it gives you the most Runic Power per use of runes, so it'll generate more Runic Power for Death Strikes. Now in terms of using Death Strike, generally if the damage isn't too severe, I'll just kind of use it on whenever I can, whenever my runes are already used, or I'm getting close to full Runic Power. Even if I don't need the healing, even if you overheal, remember you have this golden trait from Soul Drinker, and that will kind of add to your maximum health temporarily if you overheal with it, so you don't have to worry about it too much. But sometimes you do still want to pull off, like haul off on using it. If there's a lot of damage coming in and you know in the next couple of seconds, okay, the boss is about to hit me really, really hard, you could hold off, let him hit you, and then heal bigger with Death Strike. So that's pretty much the DPS priority, if you will, and I recommend this for all situations. There's some small things you can do to like boost your DPS on AoE, but I don't really recommend it if you're tanking at all. So just follow that. So it's keeping diseases up, marrow rend, so you get enough bone shield stacks, five plus, 
you know, use Death and Decay and Blood Drinker on cooldown. And then, you know, Hard Strike the rest of the runes away. Use your Death Strike to siphon off runic power or heal yourself. And then in terms of using your cooldowns, Consumption acts as both a damage cooldown as well as kind of a survivability one. Now, the healing you get from it yourself is only good on AoE. It doesn't do a lot for single target. And on single target, I generally use it as you know, when everything else is done. Like if I don't have enough runic power for Death Strike, all my runes are gone for whatever reason. Then I can use it then because it's free and it's there. It's you know stronger than Blood Boil, for example, if I already have the disease up. But with Vampiric Aura here, this trait, it's also a decent kind of mini cooldown, giving Leech to you and four allies, which will help keep them alive, especially in like a Mythic Plus is very powerful. And even in a raid, it can be quite nice as well. So I can you can use it that way as well, even on single target, as kind of a mini cooldown for the group or a few people in your group. Other defensive cooldowns, Vampiric Blood is kind of your go-to. Use it whenever you're in trouble. With Red Thirst, this talent here, it's up much more often than you might imagine. And it's so powerful. When you have it active, you're pretty much invincible, as long as you're healing yourself. And other people are healing you too. Very, very strong cooldown. Dancing Rune Weapon, I tend to use somewhat offensively, but it does have some defensive uses. Obviously, the parry is quite nice for physical damage. But for non-physical or non-melee damage... It also has extra healing from your Blood Plague, because you have three of stacks of it when you use it. Especially once you get Mouth of Hell, which gives you the third weapon, or second weapon that's copying your abilities. It does give you ten stacks of Bone Shield if you use Marowind while you have Dancing Room Weapon. Once you have that trait as well, Mouth of Hell. And it also makes your Heart Strike give you more Runic Power, because they're copying your Heart Strike. Thus giving you three times the amount of you know, hard strike, runic power generation, or at least the bonus. So it gives you more runic power, which allows you to death strike more, which keeps you alive more, and so on. So it is a pretty powerful cooldown, even on non-physical damage, but it is best for DPS and physical damage. But again, you do have some extra effects as well, which can help keep you alive. I spent Fortitude and Blood Mirror, if you take that talent, pretty similar in how you use them. Basically, a straight damage reduction. I do like to use Blood Mirror first because i think if it does like a weaker one that also does more damage for me because it's transferring damage but they both kind of serve the same purpose just straight damage reduction if you take bone storm just use it at max runic power and be aware that the healing is over time so it's not all burst healing like in one strike like death strike but it is really powerful in aoe so make sure you use it at 100 runic power or more so you get the maximum effects finally ams anti-magic shell pretty simple just use it when you're taking magic damage. Sometimes you can immune stuff, like the necrotic debuff, for example. It won't be applied as long as AMS is active, but it won't remove it, of course, if you use it. So it can be used for stuff like that to avoid debuffs that are magical and all sorts of nice things you can kind of choose with anti-magic shell as long as it doesn't break from the effect. So kind of mess around with that and see what you can do with it. Now I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate for you guys, so show you in Mythic Plus as well as a raid situation, kind of how the rotation is applied, how it's used, and what you know what you can think about as you go through a fight or a dungeon run. So here we are in a dark heart thicket, and I'll be using bone stump to can kind of see what's going on with that. So I'll drop death and decay on this pool, then blood boil for the disease, marrow rend to get my bone shield up, heart strike, and then death strike to heal. And I want to pull up some runic power so I can use bone storm. So I'll use vampiric blood just since I'm not death striking to heal for a little bit. I wanted to survive with the cooldown using heart strike to build up to 100. Then I finally get enough Bone Storm, then I'll Marrow Rend for the extra Bone Shields, then Consumption to heal myself up, because there's lots of ads and for the extra leech from my team. Then I'll Marrow Rend again for more Bone Shield stacks, to get back up above 5, drop, drop Death and Decay, and Blood Boil in between, and then just Hard Strike, and then Megan Marrow Rend when I'm below Bone Shield stacks, and then just Death Strike and Hard Strike until the dead. So that's kind of just the generic rotation, just managing your bone shield stacks, making sure you're above five, making sure you're not wasting any, so don't use it above six or seven. And then weaving in some blood boils, which I may not have mentioned specifically, but do try to weave in blood boils, especially when you're low or if your runes are done and so on, because they do do quite a bit of damage in addition to putting the disease on. So I fail to skip here. I mirror run this guy, get some bone shields up, go ahead and drop death and decay. I mirror run again, get more bone shields up, pop vampiric blood and consumption to heal the full, give leech to the team and so on, and just do some damage and threat. So I blood drinker here, do some damage to the main target, and then I go ahead and blood boil, drop death and decay here. 
and then drop Bone Storm. Now, I notice we pull stuff, so I use Gorfin's Grasp to mass grip everything in. Bone Shield, get my shield up, and then I go ahead and uh, dance a rune weapon for more damage and for some defensive purposes. And then I drop Death and Decay here. I used AMS to clear the Mushroom's anti-magic shell, just so the team didn't have to deal with it. I Blood Drinker the ad over here because the CC finally broke. Then I'll grip her over. And then just Blood Boil, get the disease on. Bone Shield with Marrow Rend, apply that. I used Vampiric Blood again because it was taking a lot of damage. And Consumption as well, just for extra damage, lots of healing, and so on. And again, that leech for the team. And then just again, Blood Boil every so often. Just to keep my two set, four set up from Tomb of Sargeras. And then just Death and Decay and so on. Just kind of following that priority. Using cooldowns as I see necessary. I didn't end up using my Trinket or Icebound Fortitude because I didn't need to. But, you know, those are available if I needed to. So here we are on Heroic Fallen Avatar. And I'm taking the Maiden first. I could open with Nancy Rune Weapon if I wanted to. But I just taunt, do a couple Marrow Rens, get that Bone Shield stack up. Mare, or excuse me, Wraith Walk over and drop a Death and Decay and Blood Drinker for damage and aggro. And then another Mare Rend, get more Bone Shields up, then Consumption just to kind of do a little damage to the boss as well as get some Leech for my party members, my raid members. And then I'm just doing the basic priority. So Death and Decay comes off, I use it. And then I taunt the boss here. And then I use my extra runes when I don't have cooldowns, when I don't have Death and Decay or Blood Drinker up. I use my extra runes on Heart Strike mostly. And then just marrow rend whenever I need those bone shield stacks. So you see a lot of that, and I will be using blood boil as well, kind of mixing it in, making sure that I do keep the buff. And here I use anti magic shell to basically immune most of this magic damage, so I can stay in, keep aggro on the boss, and so on. Now I drop death and decay where I believe the maiden will be, whether I'm taking her or not, just so it's always there and available in case I need to switch. I'll use consumption pretty soon here, just to keep it off cooldown give leech to the raid and do a little bit of extra damage and then again so death and decay comes off so i use that blood boils two stacks it's fully charged now might as well use one so i can keep the charges rolling and then just a lot of hard strikes now there goes blood drinker off cooldown so i use it right away try to do extra damage with it mostly an offensive ability but the heal is pretty decent as well death and decay again off cooldown so i use that and then just lots of hard strikes in between and blood boil occasionally you notice I didn't use any defensive cooldowns really, other than consumption if you want to consider it a kind of defensive cooldown and anti-magic shell again here. And that's just because I didn't feel like I was in danger. Now, of course, if you do find yourself in danger, go to Vampiric Blood first. Then you can mess around with other things like Blood Mirror if you took that. And, you know, Icebound Fortitude, Dancing Room Weapon, any defensive trinkets you might have. But I didn't, so I just kind of focused on Healing with Death Strike, that's which one I'm spending my reading power on. And then just doing the basic survivability, DPS, priority, or rotation. Now in terms of macros and add-ons, I use a macro to move my runes. And that is this. It's kind of a script. And I just use this. So I'll have it in the description below so you can copy and paste it if you like. But just so you know, basically this script, this uh, set scale part... You set it to how big you want it, so the 6 is how big I want it to be. It's 6 times bigger than usual. You can change that to whatever size you like. And then the coordinates here, the X and Y coordinates down here, 0, comma, negative 65, that's where it is on the screen. So, of course, you change that if you want to move it around. Now, because it's a script and not an add-on, you have to use it every time you log in, relog, reload UI. It's kind of annoying in that sense. And if you want to do something like that, you could also get the add-on called Move Anything which I don't use, but it is very, very powerful, so you might as well. If you want to move other stuff as well, it's very simple, easy to use, and very potent. In terms of add-ons, I do use Uyghurs, which you probably saw during the demonstration and throughout the video. I use it to track cooldowns. I use it to track durations and stacks of my bone shield, things like that. Then stacks and cooldown of my blood boil, my runic power bar. All sorts of stuff like that. It's a very cool add-on. You can do lots of stuff with it. I mess around with it a lot. The icons flash in the middle of my screen. It's Doom Call and Pulse. It's a very simple fire and forget add-on. I don't really recommend using it necessarily unless you just want a very simple add-on because sometimes it's not accurate. But it is there if you just want to use something that's simple and easy. 
that must mean there's all details. I have used Recount and Scada. I like this right now the most, but they're both, they're all really good. All three are really strong. So I'd probably recommend Details or Scada. And then my action bars are on Bar Sender 4. You can move the bars around however you like. You can assign key bindings to whatever you like as well. And you can choose what bars are active. So which ones you've enabled, the size, you know, the padding in between, how many buttons, how many rows, stuff like that. You mess with the extra action bar, micro menu, and so on. So it's a very cool action bar add-on there. And then I also have Access Raid Tools for my cooldown tracking for raids and stuff. I also does have other stuff like battle res, timers, raid inspect, notes you can write and send to your raid, and all sorts of fun things you can mess around with. I also do use or RA3, which does some of the same things. It does have a battle res monitor, which is what I use it for mainly. A ready check thing. You could do like auto loot method, check cooldowns. You could also this is also a cooldown menu like Exorcist Raid Tools. I also use it for alerts. So I get like little notes in my chat box about, you know, when I get, you know, when people use consumables, when people misdirect, interrupt, taunts, you know, from pets, stuff like that. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you liked it, feel free to hit with a like. If you want to see when I post more content like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to ask them in the comment section below or catch me on my stream at twitch.tv slash and I can answer your questions there. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed. Cheers.